what is up you guys we are doing this again so it is april right now i don't know when this video is going up right now it is april the 12th about six months ago i did a this video ends when i find a five star read and i really enjoyed filming it i enjoyed having a lot of books in the same video because i feel like i don't read at a quick enough pace for a reading week in my life to be entertaining because I only read like one book. But I really enjoy the format of this video because I get to shove all my reads into one video and I don't know how long it will be. So for reference, my last five star read was The Unmaking of June Pharaoh. I finished this book at the beginning of March or like in the middle of March, like March 16th I think. And um, as of right now, I have no idea when my next five star will be. And I don't really have any like five stars on the horizon right now, so we're we're gonna see how long it takes me. I have two current reads. My current physical read is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, and it has this half cover going on, which I don't like. And it's so that we can have this, which is the two love interest, which I also don't know if I like. But I am 138 pages into These Violent Delights. This is a book set in Shanghai in 1926, and you have the Scarlets, and you have the White Flowers. They're rival gangs. Juliet is the heiress of the Scarlets, and Roma? Rama? It's like Rome, but with an A. He is the heir to the White Flowers, and obviously they're rivals. Uh, they have a history between them, but someone's attack someone or something is attacking the city, that um, is causing people to tear out their own throats. This is a YA fantasy. However, it gets very, very, very gory. It's a little gory and a little gross. So far, that's really the only complaint that I have about it. Um, I am listening to a Violent Delight, these Violent Delights aesthetic playlist while I'm reading it. That is helping a lot. But um, I'm reading kind of slowly right now. I've only finished one book this month so far. I'm trying not to be hard on myself because April is just always like a weird month for me. So I'm trying not to be too hard on myself. Just lean into it and keep going. I don't expect this to be a five stars. And then um, my Spotify hours renewed. So I am listening to the audiobook of The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I have been dying to read this book ever since I read um, The Only One Left by Riley Sager. But I like thrillers kind of left a bad taste in my mouth after none of this is true so I haven't really picked up one but I, I I have just had I have like had a craving for this book specifically for the past few weeks I still don't have a library card I'm 18 and I still have not renewed my like gotten a library card since I was a kid and like that one expired like four years ago and I'm not going to buy the book <sighs> I need to get a library card that's what we're learning but um, I'm 12% through The House Across the Lake, and it's a lot harder for me to explain the concept of an, of an audiobook for me for some reason, but from what I understand, we're following this, like, actress girl, and, like, so she, like, lives in this lake house on this, like, tiny little lake in Vermont where, like, a bunch of famous people live, but she's troubled, like, she has some, like, abuse problems and different things like substance abuse um, and she lost her husband like a year ago to drowning there's this couple that lives across the lake um, that's all I got she's like watching this couple that lives across the lake I'm honestly kind of a little bit confused but I'm very very entertained and I'm actually I'm actually about to go on a little evening walk and listen to some more of my audiobook because I went on a walk earlier because that's when I typically will listen to my audiobooks, is if I'm walking or if I'm cleaning. And, um, yeah, it's motivating me to go on another walk. Uh, that one I also don't expect to be a five-star read, because thrillers are almost never five stars for me, nor are audiobooks. So that book kind of has everything working against it. However, I loved The Only One Left, so I do think it will be a very highly rated book. Alright. Um, we'll see where this video goes. Alright, I will catch you in a little bit. Hello, I know I'm literally in the same position that I was the other day when I filmed this clip. Um, 
that was Friday. This is Sunday and um, I am 82% done with the house across the lake by Riley Sager. And um, I just I just wanted to let you know that um, I haven't really updated in the middle because I've been so absolutely hooked on this book that I've been listening to it any second I get. Um, I'm not going to really give you any updates now because I feel like at this point it's just better to wait until I finish the book. So yeah. Hey guys. Long time to talk. Okay. What did I come on here to talk about? Oh yes. Number one. I finished The House Across the Lake on Sunday. It's now Wednesday. And I genuinely could, I think I could, like, at the beginning of the book, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Is this going to be a five star? This could be a five star. And I was like, and I, and as I kept reading, I was like, oh, this will be like a four star. And then if you've read the book, you a hundred percent know what I'm talking about, but you get like the main, one of the main, I'd say there are like three or four main plot twists. You get like the first main one and it's like, if you hadn't done that, I would have loved that book. But because of that plot twist, I felt like I... Like, the entire book just continued to ick me out the entire time, and I ended up rating it two and a half stars. I really don't rate books slow. Like, I'm not, like, super, super picky on books. It's rare that I have anything below a three star at all. But I, hmm, I can't say it because it's a spoiler, but that specific aspect in books, is it's like, like, I can't handle the general aspect of it. And then when you take get it like take it to the darker side it's so much worse and i still i still love riley sager so that used up like 11 and a half of my 15 spotify hours and so i used a little bit to listen to violent delights like uh, like maybe 30 minutes and um for now i don't really know where i'm standing with that book i'm like 35 percent through and I know I'm gonna finish it, I just, I don't know if I wanna finish it right now. It's, it may just be that I'm so busy with other stuff that I don't have time to dedicate to understanding a fantasy novel. But I also use the remainder of my audiobook hours to start Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, which I am now, I think, 65% through because I ran out of hours, but I went to Barnes & Noble today. And I sat down and I read a good chunk of it as well. Didn't have money to buy it though. I did put it on hold at my library. Um, it's just like four other people have it on hold. So, and I had to put it on my mom's card because I was supposed to go get a library card today. And long story short, I left my driver's license at home, which I never do. <laughs> but yeah, I am really enjoying that book so far and I don't... Hopefully it doesn't take as dark of a turn as House Across the Lake did, but I'm still really enjoying it. Riley Sager writes thrillers really, really, really well. Um, I think he does a fantastic job with that. But this book is about a girl. I feel like so many thrillers are about like women. They're in a, between a rock and a hard place, like they're down on their luck, their money's running low. And so this lady's in that position. She finds an apartment setting job in like this super famous apartment building in Manhattan where all these famous people live, but there are like a bunch of weird rules surrounding her apartment setting for this building. And it just gets really suspicious. Um, she has a neighbor who is like pretty heavily involved in the story. She has another neighbor who's very heavily involved in the story. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it's just like weird stuff starts happening. You get a then and now perspective, but the now perspective is like very, very, very brief. It's like a page and a half each time. And you can tell that something happened in a period of like a week that sent her running out of the apartment. And that's pretty much all you know. So yeah, I'm super excited to finish that. I almost bought the book today and I was like, no, I'll be fine. Instead, I bought, can you see this? I really want you to be able to see this because look at how pretty this cover is. I bought my very first Abby Jimenez book, which is just for the summer. It just came out like a couple weeks ago. And I've been seeing raving reviews for this. Um, I am scared of contemporary adult romance after reading 
Kyland and Flawless last year. It just intimidates me a little bit. <laughs> because there's a lot of spice in a lot of books. And that's what I'm learning. And not a lot of people talk about how much spice is in those books. I don't, I don't like reading spice. I do not read for spice. That is my personal opinion. Um, that's not why I'm reading a book. So I'm really hoping that this book isn't super spicy. When I was saying I may put down Violent Delights, if I do, this will probably be the book that I pick up. This video is so all over the place. I am so sorry. But that's, that's what a finding a five star book video always is, right? Okay, quick little disclaimer. It's literally hours later. Those of you who are screaming at me right now, as I'm saying that part of you, or not part of your world, um, <laughs> just for the summer is my first Abby Jimenez book. I went to go log in on my Goodreads and I see that it's the third book in the Part of Your World trilogy. I have no interest in reading Part of Your World. The only other book that has interested me by Abby Jimenez is Yours Truly, which I see is the second book in that series. At least it's not like a fantasy series or something where I'm like getting like major things spoiled for me. Um, and even the spoilers that I will inevitably get, I, I'm sure I will be okay with, so. had a busy couple of days at Barnes & Noble so my audiobook hours are basically out um, and I was like most of the way through lock every door and so I went to Barnes & Noble and I read the first half of it or what I had left of the first half of it on Wednesday because it's Friday now so that was on Wednesday and then yesterday I went back to Barnes & Noble and finished it and I loved it it was literally so close to a four star but I gave it 3.75. Um, it did take a darker turn, um, like I am figuring out that Riley Sager does, but it wasn't nearly as bad as The House Across the Lake. I really enjoyed it. Towards the end, it kind of gave me like um, All In and Bad Blood by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Like the if the two of them were like combined and like turned into like an adult novel and like less intricate, that was kind of like the entire premise of Lock Every Door and like what was behind the mystery. I think I mentioned that I am reading Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, and I am almost 150 pages through. I have been sleeping on Abby Jimenez. She is absolutely wonderful and beautiful, and I completely understand why everyone says that her books are like a breath of fresh air. This book, I am almost 150 pages in. I could see it being a five star, which would make this video really boring, but... I could totally see this being a five star. You have Emma and you have Justin and both of them have this curse where everyone they date as soon as they break up the person that they were dating goes off and finds their soulmate. So they meet each other online and they're like oh well if we date each other then we'll just break up and we'll go off to find our soulmates. It's just so sweet and wholesome. Um, check the trigger warnings before you read this book. Um, I actually love the deeper topics that are being dealt with in here. The Emma has a lot of issues with her mother, which I really enjoy. Like, I really enjoy it as someone who, it, a part of my life, wanted to be a social worker. I enjoy that part of the story. Justin also has issues with his mom and his dad. And yeah, I don't know. It's just such a beautiful story. It's just like, it's so funny and the chemistry is wonderful. And it's just so light, even though the deep, even despite the deep topics that are being talked about. And I just love it so much and I can't stop reading it. Like when I'm not reading it, I'm thinking about reading it. So that sounds like a five star to me, but we'll see.
going to make me cry again. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. There's no way. There's no way. Oh. Long story short, Emma lives in a house on an island and the only way that Justin can get to her is like by boat. We're in a pretty interesting situation right now and they can't use the boat. Justin just grabbed a unicorn floaty and a paddle and is making his way to this woman. What? Who, who is this man? Unironically, I'm going to throw up. Like, what? What? Hi, friends. My room is an absolute total mess right now, but I am 300 pages through just for the summer by Abby Jimenez and I realized that I haven't updated in a hot minute so I don't, I don't really know what else there is to update I'm pretty sure this video is gonna be pretty short for y'all because this is about to be a five stars um, never in my life have I read a book where I want to literally imitate the relationship dynamic of the couple and I want to imitate this couple. Like, there's so much that I can learn from the girl. There's so much that I can learn from the guy. And they just work so well together. Both of their personalities are so sweet. And the storyline with him really hits home with me because I'm the oldest of three. And I've always really wanted an older brother. And I kind of forgot about that. Like, as I got older. Because, like, what's the point about thinking about something that you don't... Are ever going to have, you know? But, um... This book is making me remember how much I used to wish that I had an older brother. And if I did, he would be exactly what I wanted. Because he's just so precious. And he is the epitome of if he wanted to, he would. But unfortunately, guys like him don't really exist because they're written by women. But he, I think he, I think Justin might be my new book boyfriend. Okay, I'm going to read now. Yesterday, I finished Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, and no surprise, I rated this book five stars. Well, I, I say no surprise, I'm actually very surprised because I did not buy this book expecting it to be a five stars. I didn't even realize like it was the third book of a series or anything like that. I was just like, oh, the cover's pretty, everyone's saying good things about it, and I've been meaning to try Abby Jimenez. And after reading Happy Place and then reading this, I feel like I could even like Abby Jimenez better than Emily Henry. So you can imagine what two books just got added to my TBR. I just added Part of Your World and Yours Truly to my like mental TBR. I will be buying those as soon as I can get my hands on them for a decent price. And anyways, that is besides the points. Four dates, a kiss, and a breakup. Um, it's the terms of their agreement because they believe that if they date each other and then break up They'll both go off to find their soulmates And um, you can imagine where it goes from there. Emma was neglected as a child um, raised 
by a single mom until she was put in foster care at like eight years old. So there, check the trigger warnings for that. That was something that I loved reading about because it had a, like it added so much emotional depth just to Emma's character in general. Justin also has issues with his own mom. I don't want to spoil that though because that, that is, that is revealed pretty early on, but I didn't know it going in, so I don't want to tell you guys. The writing is beautiful. I actually did tab a little bit. Um, I didn't tab a lot because sometimes I feel like tabbing takes away the enjoyment of just reading the book. I didn't really annotate very much. I just tabbed a few things and the chemistry was perfect. Like, perfect. I want to imitate Emma and Justin, I feel like there is so much that I can learn from both of them as human beings in a imperfect relationship. That was another thing is like, yes, this book is like so fictional and like this guy is so fictionally perfect. Like you're never going to find a guy like this in real life. And, but at the same time, it had so many realistic elements that it felt like the premise was unrealistic, but their relationship felt grounded in realistic like experiences if that makes sense like real world problems their banter was adorable <laughs> they had every single thing like like they had so many interesting things happen Abby Jimenez threw in so many interesting things that it's just like wow could the could they be in any worse of a situation together like this is just so weird or gross or whatever um and I think I've said it multiple times in this video but Justin is um if he wanted to, he would. I don't know how else to describe it. I love this book with my whole heart. I um, am going to be lending it out to everyone I know who will voluntarily read it. So yeah. Um, anyways, I know that this is relatively short for a this video ends when I find a five star, but I'm still going to post it because I think it's fun. And um, I really want this book to be in a reading vlog because I loved it so much. So yeah, here's to my second five star of the year. Actually, this is literally going to, I've promoted this to a six star read because of just how perfect it is. So yeah. All right. Well, that is all for me for today, you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to me ramble on about words on a page because that's what you're here to listen to, I hope. So yeah. All right. Um, I love how I said that I would see you guys in my April wrap up in my last video and um, I'm posting this before that. So for real this time, I will see you guys in my April wrap-up. Love you. Goodbye.